This week, we're going to look at the geography of the ancient Near East. So we're going to focus in on that portion of the world that deals with the Bible. So this is the land of the Old Testament. Uh, you also, underneath this video, be provided a printout. So make sure you read the printout. I'll go through the different topics, the different areas that we're going to discuss, but also you'll have that printout to look at for quizzes and for future reference. Okay, the topics we're going to discuss in this video are the Fertile Crescent, the area of Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Levant, and the international highways. So really what we're going to do is get an overview of the, the land of the Old Testament, the area in which all these things take place. Okay. The first area that is often discussed when this area is studied is the area of the Fertile Crescent. You have a map there before you showing you that area which is really covered when we speak about the Fertile Crescent. This is an area that is known for Known for a diverse geogra uh, geographical uh, region as far as the amount of vegetation and the amount of life and water that takes place in this area. You know, when we often think about the ancient Near East and the land of the Bible, we think about just desert. And a lot of these areas really aren't just desert. Uh, they're very, as, as the area would imply, they're very fertile. And so when we read early on in Genesis about where um, the Garden of Eden is, it's in this area. We read about Abraham coming out of Ur of the Chaldees. It's in this area. Um, and so it's important to know the geographic regions and uh, also what's going on as far as the agriculture is concerned. Because in these early civilizations, uh, agriculture played a huge part. You know, civilizations popped up along rivers and they popped up and stayed in areas uh, which could support life and could support people. So the big things really to know about the area of the Fertile Crescent, the rivers, uh, the Tigris and Euphrates, this is, this is the main area uh, of Babylon and the Babylonian captivity. So when Babylon uh, will take over and they will take uh, people in Israel and Judah, mainly Israel, off to captivity, uh, they'll be taken to this area. So the book of Daniel, when Daniel's in Babylon, uh, that's the area we're talking about. Nineveh is just north of the Fertile Crescent. When we talk about Nineveh, when we look to particularly Jonah, this is the Assyrian Empire. And so this is the land in which a lot of the empires that overtake and um, even destroy, ultimately, Jerusalem, which is destroyed uh, by Babylon, or the Babylonian Empire. Uh, this is where they're coming from. And I've provided you with uh, some information that you can read uh, right there on this, on this slide. Okay, historical significance. It is agriculturally vibrant. Again, we kind of think of this area as being less agriculturally vibrant. We think of it being uh, desert, but again, this area is not just desert. This area is teeming with life. It's the origins of life. So when we read the early part of the book of Genesis, this is where we are. Uh, this is where life begins. And so the origin of life is 
found there. And then you have the connection of continents. You have the African continent uh, where Egypt is. Uh, you also have the European con continent to the north, uh, north, uh, west of this area. You have the Asian continent. And so all these continents are coming together in this Fertile Crescent area. Now we'll look at Mesopotamia. This is the home of Abraham. So Mesopotamia, uh, you'll often hear about it spoken. Uh, of course, this is the area of modern day Iraq. And so the Fertile Crescent in that area, we're talking about uh, what is going on as far as the agricultural is concerned, because it is fertile. But now we're talking about the origins of civilization, the beginning of civilization. And this is more of a geographical area, not necessarily that it all is fertile, although it is in the fertile crescent. So with Mesopotamia, uh, it was an integral part of the biblical landscape in many periods. Uh, you have things like the home location of Abraham found in Mesopotamia. Uh, you're going to have uh, the children of Israel in exile. Uh, you're going to have the, the origin again of the Garden of Eden between those two rivers, uh, two mighty rivers. Now there's four rivers that are named in that early part of the text, but we often go back and we think about those two uh, rivers uh, those which are the Tigris and Euphrates. Um, and so th this is the first really great civilization that is coming into being in a geographical area in that uh, it has its own culture, its own religions within it. Uh, it not we're not just thinking in these terms of Christian religion. These are, there are multiple, multiple faceted religions within the area of Mesopotamia, but really it's the origins of civilization. It gives birth to all these other civilizations and societies that will come out of it. it has its own art. You can find art uh, in the area of Mesopotamia from this early period predating some of those civilizations and some of these are part of those civilizations and their culture as well. Again, the great rivers that flow through this area, the area of the Fertile Crescent and Mesopotamia, uh, two dominant rivers, and that is the Tigris and Euphrates and it flowing down to the Persian Gulf. And so if you think about uh, modern geography, modern geography, this is the area of Iraq, uh, Iran. Uh, uh, and then not too far from this, uh, off the Persian Gulf, you have, you know, places like Qatar and others. So it's a huge strategic portion of, of the Old Testament is found in that area of Mesopotamia. These rivers, of course, are a huge geographical wonder, uh, and and they make what um, they make this area an important strategic area uh, throughout the civilization. So you can read that in your time as well. Uh, what is the historical significance as far as the uh, Bible is concerned and as far as the uh, geography is concerned? It is, of course, the land of Abraham. We have Ur, uh, that place where Abraham is called out from. Then you have strategic diversity, north and south, or geographic diversity. Uh, you have, you know, high mountains to the north, um, 
and then low valleys to the south going down to the Persian Gulf. Um, and then the major cities you have, as far as the Bible is concerned, you have Nineveh in the northern part, Babylon in the middle part. And so these are going to play a strategic role as we look uh, throughout uh, the Bible, throughout the Old Testament. In Egypt, of course, it is the land of the prophets, the land of the pharaohs. Uh, Egypt plays a huge role in the Old Testament, also plays a role in the New Testament. So Egypt is a key figure as far as geographically uh, in the Old Testament. So this is the northern part of the African continent. So if the Fertile Crescent connects this area and Mesopotamia, uh, you have the connection there. And then uh, Egypt itself being the land where the pharaohs come from. It's home to the, one of the world's uh, most enduring civilizations. It lo looms large in the biblical landscape. For over 3,000 years, Egyptian history unfolded, casting its spell over the ancient world. Of course, you'll have Abraham that journeys down into Egypt. Remember what happens with him trying to pass Sarah, his wife, off as his sister, and what takes place there in the book of Genesis. Of course, you'll have Joseph being sold into slavery, ultimately ending up in Egypt. Uh, then essentially rising to a point where he becomes um, what we would consider the prime minister, the second in charge underneath Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh being kind of like the king, uh, Joseph being the governing person, and he's uh, gathering up grain because of the famine he knows is going to come, and and so you'll see the influence of Egypt, uh, even when Moses rises to prominence, he's reared in Pharaoh's home, uh, raised there. He goes and, of course, leads the children of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, but then, of course, they grumble and complain, wanting to go back because uh, they had all of what they needed in Egypt, and now they're out in the desert suffering, right? Uh, so Egypt plays a big role, of course, geographically. Uh, the Nile River serves as a great resource, not only to Egypt, but also to all of the continent of Africa. And uh, it was a a huge it was a, a huge trade area uh, within the northern part of Egypt. It provided for trade and still does to this day. Uh, it's amazing just to study the rivers around the world and their impact on the area in which they are found without rivers. Uh, most places um, would actually die off very quickly. And, and the reason that civilizations weren't established in given areas or that they had no rivers that would allow for travel and allow for prosperity. Uh, so, Nothing really was established there. So the Nile River plays a huge portion of civilization in Egypt. We have histor historical significance for Egypt. Uh, there is uh, the bondage of Israel. Israel in bondage there in Egypt. And so the stories that go along with that, Moses, 
being the leader that leads the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of captivity. And yes, Moses is the leader, but ultimately it is God who actually does this very wonderful and powerful thing. And then the Pharaohs, uh, early on, the pharaohs become those who are kind of the antagonists in the biblical story, um, particularly in the case of Moses and the situation of leading the ch- children of Israel out of bondage. Next, we have this area called the Levant and the vast majority of biblical history plays out in this area. What does the term Levant mean? It describes the habitable land along the Eastern Mediterranean coast sandwiched between the Mediterranean sea on the West and the Syro-Arabian Desert to the east. So this strip of land in which uh, all of the civilization springs up. This is the area of the Levant. And the vast majority of all biblical history uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament is found in this given area. So the Old Testament, really the only time they go outside of this area is early on when you have uh, the Fertile Crescent and Mesopotamia coming into play with um, the Garden of Eden and then Abraham being called out of that area. But then this is the promised land, the promised area uh, where Jerusalem is Israel. When the kingdoms are split up, you have Israel to the north, Judah to the south. They're still in this area. And then the only time that really you see anyone going outside of this area is not until the New Testament when the Apostle Paul goes on three missionary journeys and they are mainly all outside of the area of the Levant. But it is a huge, significant area because it is the area of the Bible. Uh, It's the land of the Bible. You have the intersecting of nations and then major cities, of course, Jerusalem, Jericho, Damascus, uh, you know, now in terms of context you would add a city like Tel Aviv um, areas like Lebanon uh, Syria in the northern part of this which is uh, where Damascus is so this is the land of the Bible that will be the background upon which all of our study is going to be And then we have these highways, international highways. And of course, they're not highways as we think of them today. You know, in the old days, you didn't have the interstate system. The interstate system doesn't come around until the 1950s, 60s, and really isn't finished until the late 80s, early 1990s, and that had a lot to do with Dwight Eisenhower. But these, these were trade routes uh, from Asia down through the Fertile Crescent, down through the Levant, over into Africa, into Egypt, and, and that area. And so you have these highways that connect Egypt and Mesopotamia that traversed the area of Palestine uh, until recently 
most of the important international highway system was called uh, the Via Mars. This is the way of the sea. Uh, so if you get opportunity, read that. Also, um, we have multiple highways that we're speaking of. And here are the highways that we are talking about. This is uh, the King's Highway, which is one of the, probably the, the main one we think about. We have the Way of Shur and then the Way to the Sea. And why were these historically significant? Well, they were trade routes uh, through which goods were sent. You know, there were, um, it, it, it was very dangerous along these trade routes at times. There were people who um, would stop you along the way, rob you because you were out in a very deserted area. And there was a possibility of getting accosted by by people who were uh, trying to gain wealth and trying to take the possessions of other people. But there was also the possibility of travel. So along these roads, you could travel... Uh, quite easily uh, as far as uh, not having to tra traverse across desert or traverse across um, wilderness. Uh, you had a straight path in which you could follow. Uh, and these are just some other maps that I want to point out as far as the area of the Levant is concerned and also uh, highlighting once the children of Israel get back into the land of um, Israel. <coughs> of course, they spread out and uh, they take up different portions of Israel and uh, Judah course, later on, you'll have uh, the split in the kingdom, the dividing of the kingdom. This is after David, after King David, now the dividing of the kingdoms. And then, uh, but you can see the different tribes that are represented and the areas in which they're represented. And, and as we go along, read through the Bible, we'll deal with the different tribes. And of course, if you don't know, uh, the tribes are named after Jacob's sons, uh, all but Joseph. Uh, of course, you don't have a tribe of Joseph, uh, but the sons of Jacob these are uh, the ones in which each tribe is named after and making up the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is kind of, this is where they're laid out as far as the um, geogra geographic locations within Israel and the surrounding area. Another map is um, the divided kingdom. You can see Israel to the north, Judah to the south. And of course, Judah falls later. Israel falls earlier. And we will get to that portion when we talk about uh, the prophets and the history past um, King David and the divided kingdoms. Thank you for watching. 
Uh, thank you for taking part of this lecture. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me and have a wonderful day.